Hello painters! Let's try something different today. You'll notice I have two um, palettes here on my studio work table. Uh, they each have a piece of fabric taped to them. Um, and one is a cotton drill, which is a little heavier than uh, the other one. Uh, the other one is cotton muslin. And I'm curious to see if we can paint on these and um, then once they're dry, stitch them into um, some shoulder bags. I'd like to make some one-of-a-kind art shoulder bags, but I'm not sure this will work. I'm using no VOC varnish from Earth Safe Finishes, and I'm using this because there are, is no odor no fumes at all, so it's appropriate for households that have pets, small children, anyone with chemical sensitivities. And I have the fabric taped down to plastic and then I have um, cardboard inside to support it. And my plan is to um, do a swipe on top of the fabric and um, see if we can stitch through it. I know that um, Earth Safe Finishes, no VOC products are uh, very flexible, but I'm not sure about stitching through them. So this is going to be a little bit of an experiment, and what you haven't seen is I've already tried this once with a pour, but uh, it was too thick and it just made a mess on the fabric, so I threw that one away, and we're going to try this one with a swipe. So I'm going to let this dry, and then we're going to come back and uh, paint the fabric. Okay, our prepared fabric is almost dry, and I've mixed up some red, some gold, and some copper using our usual um, mixture of one part acrylic base and four parts pouring medium. And I want to mention here we need to shake those up really well each time before we use them, and that's to prevent any paint snot to, from forming in the paint and from keeping the consistency uh, consistent from the top to the bottom of the, of the container. Um, I used red um, that came in your kit, but I wanted it a little deeper red this time, so I added just a couple of drops of red oxide to it, and um, I really like the red. It's a, a very rich red. And I have um, the metallics. We're going to mix up in another video here pretty soon. Pretty yeah, pretty soon. I'm going to add a couple of drops of silicone to each one, and then mix them up. And as I mentioned, we don't want to put too much paint on this fabric because I'm not sure how it's going to do. We don't want it to puddle, so we're not going to do a direct pour. We're going to do um, a swipe instead. So I'm going to use the mixing sticks and spread them out. The goal is to get it evenly spread onto the fabric. And no, you don't have to be careful at all because we're going to swipe over it in just a little bit anyway. And I'm not sure whether I'm going to just do a controlled swipe on top of the colors that we have or if I'm going to put a black down. Um, I'm afraid the black might make it a little too dark and I don't want that. So um, we may just do a controlled swipe. Swipe is one of my favorite techniques. You don't have to tilt. I am just really hesitant about tilting. And yes, I am pouring a little bit, but I'm not like doing a flip cup where we're pouring, pouring lots of ounces of uh, paint on top of the fabric. We don't want it to puddle. And this fabric, when I uh, got it wet with the uh, With the no VOC varnish, it really curled up. The um, 
muslin did not, but boy, this one really did curl up. And I have tape around the edges of the outside, and my goal with that was to um, keep the seam allowances free of the paint to kind of reduce the bulk. I have no idea if that will actually work or not, but it sounded good. So the curls are making it a little difficult to spread the paint evenly. But it's not too bad. And I'm thinking after it dries, I may add some just a little bit of black lines, some design lines in it. And that's because I would like to use a, a black button for a closure on this and a black um, handle or strap. It'll probably be a little shoulder bag, so probably have a strap on it, maybe a cord strap. And we're getting there. Now for swipes, I really like using my frosting spreader right from the cake department at, at Michael's. And I'm going to use this to swipe across and I'm hoping we're going to get some nice cells for them. Oh yes, we do have some nice cells for me. Okay, now I'll get my creme brulee torch. And hopefully I'll torch the fabric without torching the plastic. And yes, there are cells popping up, and there are ear bubbles popping as well. Okay. So, should I add the design lines now, or shall I wait till they dry? Let's try adding the de design lines on this piece while it's wet, and on the other piece when it's dry. So here's my black paint that was left over from yesterday, and I always cover my cups with um, Glad Press and Seal. It does a really good job of um, keeping the paint from drying out. So my goal here is to drizzle just a little bit of the black. There we go. I want just a little design line going through there. There. That makes it pop, doesn't it? Okay, I'm going to move this one out and bring the other fabric in. Okay, we're back with the muslin fabric, and as you can see, I've put um, the same colors down, the red, the gold, and the copper, and I've completely covered the surface of the fabric, and now I'm ready to put my black on, and this time I'm going to try an all-over uh, swipe technique going from the center in each direction. So I've mixed the black up a little thinner than normal. I mixed it one part acrylic base, four parts eco pour, pouring medium, and then just a few drops of water to thin it out. And we're going to try pouring this across and then swiping in each direction with our handy dandy swiper. Okay, here goes nothing. And it's 
a little thick over here, so I'm going to swipe that again. Yeah, that's better. And you can see the cells popping up. Now we're going to swipe this direction. And I'm using more pressure in the center and less pressure on the spatula toward the outside. And that's so we can kind of get the swipe to fade away at the edges. I'm liking the muslin because it's not curling like that drill did. And I'm going to torch this to see what happens. I really like the red and black together down here. Woo! There we go. That looks like I wanted it to look. Get that lacing look in there. That's exactly what I wanted. Boy, I can hardly wait to see this dry because the metallics will really pop out from behind that black. Okay, we're going to let this dry and I'll be back in a bit. This is the finished purse from the painted drill. The insertion of the zipper was the challenging part, but I really like the contrast of the black cord against the uh, painted surface. This is the outside of one of the two mini purses I made from the painted muslin. I really like the cell structure in this one. And I use black Buna cord, which is a synthetic uh, rubber for the handles. This is the inside of that purse with the flap open. It's all one long rectangle folded up and stitched along the edges. Really easy construction. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please click the like and subscribe buttons below and visit the website at www.earthsafefinishes.com. If you'd like to see more examples of acrylic pouring, please visit my website, Studio Beth Shan, www.studiobethshan.com. And happy painting!